Hello, how is everyone doing out there in this crazy time of COVID-19? Here in New Zealand, we are entering our fourth week of lockdown. We've just come out of a long weekend for Easter, so we had Friday and Monday off. And I caught up with a friend of mine over the weekend and she was talking about how through this time of isolation, her family decided that they were going to be content creators, not content watchers. And I thought that was really cool. And I woke up this morning with all these ideas and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna to contribute to the content creation. The world is so noisy on media now, right? And you can get lost down that frickin' rabbit hole. It's kind of like watching a movie, but it's plot twists of reality. And if you consume too much media, you can get consumed and pulled down into that deep, dark, bloody hole of corruption and crimes against humanity. But just like food that is mass produced versus food that is home grown, we can choose what we want to consume. A different point of view can see us consuming words of hope, vision, kindness, health, sustainability, creativity, compassion, and possibilities for this new world that we are expanding into. And I'm beginning to see the contrast of the polarities. And the question that presents itself is, well, how do I want to show up within these extremes? And how we show up will determine our levels of resilience, awareness, consciousness. How we show up will reflect where we are placing our attention and how conscious we are of our intentions. You know, it just seems like, gosh, yesterday that our Prime Minister, Jacinda, one courageous woman, announced that we had 48 hours to arrange working from home and to organise our bubbles for isolation with the only time leaving our homes being for essential reasons like going to the supermarket or the doctor or getting outside for your daily dose of exercise. So my team, my colleagues, we had to very quickly rearrange home life to incorporate work life. And within that disruption, we had to adjust and find the opportunities to connect and create community within the separation. And of course, it wasn't just our team and it wasn't just New Zealand, it was our global society. It is our global community going through like this planetary panic attack as we have been forced out of the comfortable into the uncomfortable, the predictable into the unpredictable, out of the known into the unknown. You know, it doesn't matter what race, religion, status, financial position, we have all been brought into, I kind of liken it to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where we were pulled back to just ensuring that our basic needs were met, that sense of security. Uncertainty called for us to reach and grab for certainty. And actually, you know what, maybe that's why so many people were reaching and grabbing for toilet paper to give them certainty that they could deal with this shit. <laughs> But you know, I feel so grateful for the position that I'm in with my family, with my work, with my health, because I am so aware that within these extremes, you know, we've got people that are just surviving through to the other extreme of thriving. New Zealand tourism attracts on average 4 million visitors a year. And with our borders closed, tourism is closed. Many jobs are lost and businesses are shut down. My family lives on the road to Hobbiton and doors are closed. Like this is a tourist attraction that attracts over 500,000 visitors that flood into our little Matamata Mata town every year. So 1,200 to 2,000 visitors daily. And yet again, we see the contrast. Whilst there is a devastating effect on our economy, I now drive down a little country road and I see no litter, no traffic pollution. Lockdown has unlocked the opportunity for nature and us as human beings to breathe fresh air. So out of this, I find myself reflecting on questions like, can we sustain a healthier world? 
Can we hold conscious awareness and make sustained choices to reduce our carbon footprint? Will these environmental gains last? Will we come out of lockdown being more responsible human beings? So how do we find that balance between economic growth and profitability and planetary sustainability? I know for me that nature centres me and while so much around us has been locked down, put on hold, cancelled, well, like just come with me for a moment, you know, let's go outside because <laughs> nature, nature has not been cancelled. So let's just go check it out. This is my daughter's horse, Cookie. Hey, Cookie. <laughs> they have no idea that we are in lockdown. Gosh, the wind has really taken up today. I can so feel and appreciate the breeze on my skin. And check out this view. Like, check it out, man. <laughs> Nature has not been cancelled. Now, if you don't have this view in your backyard, if you're living in the city, just look up at the sky. The sky has not been cancelled. And remember that we can create the external world in our internal world. Close your eyes. See it. Find certainty and comfort in knowing that the moon will smile upon us tonight. You know, appreciation expands our gratitude and gratitude, like so many studies now, show how gratitude improves our health. Right now, our resilience, our capacity to adjust and bounce back, that's going to determine our future narrative. So what lessons could we learn from nature's diversity and complexity to bounce back after disruption? Storms, fires, snow, droughts. Our worldviews, our biases will try and pull us back into the way that it was before. But what if we were to live in the question of possibility, of what could be possible beyond our point of view, our worldview? Could we emerge out of this even stronger than before? A stronger economy, a stronger ecosystem, a stronger immune system. And when we talk about immune health, look, I've just got to put it out there. I'm a little bit over hearing about the big V, you know, for vaccines, like we're just waiting for this thing to come and save us. But where are we hearing about the V for Vitamin D, like who's getting outside, getting your vitamin D, so critically important for our immune health. The V for vitamin A, you know, deep, rich, colorful foods that are so good for our body. The V for vitamin C, our bodies are these living cells, filled of living cells that crave for living, you know, soil rich organic foods that feed our cells gut health, the microbiome, the world of bacteria in here plays such a critical role in our health. So in wrapping up, my question is how do we want to contribute in the duality of light and dark? Do we want to be part of creating our world? Or are we just going to like wake up one day and go, what the fuck just happened? You know, we are the source of our individual and collective creativity. Every heartbeat is a message of the creation of life. The question is, how do we want to empower that creation of life? Who do we choose to be? And how do we want to show up with creativity, compassion and courage as we walk down this pathway of creating our reality?